I had assumed that being a national security threat would mean that you would need to have been a member of a proscribed group or something as extreme. Clearly, it, it can apply to anyone and it can be used on, on anyone that expresses any views that the state does not agree with. Dana Abu Kamar is a Palestinian student in the UK who was labelled a national security threat and nearly deported for her political activism. In December, the UK's Home Office sent Dana a letter notifying her that her student visa would be revoked and that she would be removed from the country. She was also expelled from the University of Manchester as a result. I was surprised and I was shocked to receive such a decision and to read through these accusations that deemed me a national security threat. I'm only 19 throughout my entire life, only gone to school, volunteered, um, you know, advocate for social justice and try and be an asset to my community. And I knew deep down that at that moment when I received a, a letter of intention that it was going to materialize solely because of just how aware I've become of the systemic discrimination that is present in the UK. But after I lodged my human rights appeal, I was able to, to be reinstated at university and finish my degree. The Home Office's threat of deportation is on hold while Dana's human rights appeal is processed. The Home Office letter referenced an 8th of October interview Dana did last year with Sky News at a rally in support of Palestinians in Gaza. Dana's comments were edited together with images of the 7th of October attack by pro-Israel social media accounts, which got millions of views online and even led to condemnations by British government ministers. We are both in fear, but also we are full of pride. We're really, really full of joy of, of, of what has happened. I do not regret what I said. I was filled with pride and joy and I was celebrating the breaking of the siege. The breaking of the siege is a monumental moment in Palestinian resistance. Um, and that is not and should not be equated with support for a specific group uh, or support for any harm to innocent civilians. <laughs> In fact, equating that to uh, terrorism just means that Palestinians are seen as deserving of living in a prison and deserving of being entrapped. You know, we were celebrating the breaking of the siege because it is a lawful act of resistance. Um, and equating that to harm to innocent civilians is just completely out of place. I never supported or condoned harm to innocent civilians, and I never will. That is just not who I am. Um, they misrepresented my character and my views. Dana's case raises questions about free speech in the UK and legitimate support for resistance movements. The right-wing British government has spent years criticizing what it sees as a lack of free speech on university campuses and has even passed new laws guaranteeing students the right to free speech. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to place a duty on universities to promote freedom of speech to make provision for fining universities that do not comply with that duty. However, recent Palestine protests have shown that the limit of free speech is Palestine and criticism of Israel, especially voicing support for a people resisting a military occupation, which is actually a key tenet of the UN Human Rights Charter. As a resident here in the UK, freedom of speech, I assumed, would apply to me just like it would apply to any other person. So my expression of my political views, and in this case humanitarian views, um, we're definitely curtailed by the Home Office decision to suppress and censor my voice in supporting Palestinian resistance. Resistance is not just limited to armed resistance, which is very much illegal under international law. You can resist in, in various different forms. You can resist by educating others. You can resist by existing. And that's what Palestinians have been doing for the past 76 years um, upon the establishment of Israel. They've held on to their lands regardless of the oppression, regardless of apartheid. Dana's father's family is originally from Beersheba, now in Israel, but were forced to flee to the West Bank during the 1948 Nakba, while her mother's family is originally from Gaza. Fifteen of her relatives have been killed by Israel since October 7th. 
So while the UK government allows British citizens and residents to fight for the Israeli army and said it will not stop those who have committed war crimes in Gaza from returning, nor has it done for any returning Israeli soldiers in the past. Levy, I'm here in Jerusalem, originated from London. British residents with heritage in Gaza who support the legitimate resistance to these wars are deported or barred from entering in the first place. Blatant hypocrisy. When it comes to the UK's policy in blindly supporting Israel in its perpetration of genocide, anything that goes against that needs to be shut down, needs to be suppressed, no matter the cost and no matter how that um, kind of conflicts with, with human rights and with um, the various different principles that are legally applied here in this country. And so, yes, clearly, like their, their training of IDF soldiers and their sending of, of um, you know, arms and various other support in instruments to uh, Israel merely showcases uh, the, the blunt support of, of UK to Israel. The Home Office has cancelled my student visa because I spoke up against genocide. And I stand before you today continuing to advocate for Palestine and I ask the same of you. <laughs> Stand up against this injustice no matter the risk.